Buckle up because the world's biggest drone brand just got slapped with a ticking time bomb. And the fuse, it's exactly six months long. Mission Impossible. December 23rd, 2025. You better mark it on your calendar because here's the deal. Buried deep in the US National Defense Authorization Act, or the NDAA, if you like your acronym alphabet soup style, is something called Section 1709. It sounds boring, but it's not. Section 1709 gives US national security agencies like DHS, DOD, FBI, and yes, probably some folks with three letter agencies that you've never even heard of, exactly one year to review both DJI and Autel. And that year runs out on December 23rd, 2025. Well, here's where it gets spicy. If no agency steps up to do the review, DJI automatically gets added to the FCC covered list. And that's not a medal, that's the banned in the US list. Like, no, bad. And what does that mean? No more DJI drones sold. No new firmware updates, and if you're a firefighter, farmer, or filmmaker using DJI, tough sh**. So what's DJI's move in all this? Well, audit us, we dare you. In an unusual twist, well, not really, but maybe, DJI is begging for a review. They've posted blogs, waved flags, and said, please, please just audit us. They're pointing to years of independent security audits, a bug bounty program, and data privacy settings like the local data mode. DJI's take on this? Let the experts look, but don't just pull the plug blindly. And before Canadian viewers reach for that syrupy sigh of relief, no, you're not off the hook either. If DJI gets iced in the US, Canada's gonna feel the chill. Prices will go up, supply chains will freeze, and good luck getting parts or support. Plus, Canadian agencies often mirror US policy, so your Mavic might end up on a shelf either way. So what can you do? DJI's calling on drone users just like you to tell your elected officials how you can use your gear. Show them that you're not a threat. You're a farmer surveying crops, a search and rescue team flying at night, a creator catching a golden hour shot. So you've got six months. After that, it's not the battery running out, it's your options. All right, let's talk leaks because this wouldn't be an episode without a reshare of something that's been posted on X. At Quadro News on X posted what appears to be the DJI Mini 5 Pro in the wild again. It's got full prop guards, chunkier arms, and a vibe that says, I'm small, but I lift. Is it for indoor flying? Regulatory loophole dodging? Child proofing for the overconfident TikTok pilot? I guess we'll see soon, as Jasper Ellens is also teasing on Facebook that he knows the date and that people would be mad if he shared it. Do you think that that means it's coming up real soon or is it potentially getting delayed or not available in the US at all? So what do I think about the photo? Well, we're still waiting to see a proper category one approved drone, which means a drone that is under 249 grams or half a pound has prop guards and has remote ID. If DJI can pull that off this time around, then we'd have a drone that's approved for operations over people without a waiver in the US. That would be a good thing. So this episode's brought to you by us, Coastal Drone Co. If you're thinking about flying a new drone this summer and haven't got your license yet, well, that's a bit of a risky move. Don't be that guy on TikTok getting escorted off the beach by the RCMP or the Federales. We've trained almost 20,000 drone pilots across Canada and the USA, including basic, advanced, part 107, and now our level one complex cert that is coming soon. Online or in person, we've got chill vibes and real results. Check out the links below or hit coastaldrone.co to fly smarter, not harder, and not scared. So you finally scored that sweet used DJI drone deal on Facebook Marketplace? Nice. Except, bad news, it might be totally useless by next week. So effective today, DJI is changing how drone ownership works. From today on, the drone can only be unbound or rebound by the person who currently is registered to it. That means you can't go and ask them after the fact. Translation, if the guy you bought it from forgets or forgot to unbind it from their DJI account before handing it off to you, you now own a very sleek, very fancy paperweight. So DJI support says they'll not override this. There'll be no secret reset, no helpful tech wrap, no firmware handshake in the back alley. You are locked out unless the previous owner goes into the DJI Fly app and manually unbinds the drone. So if you're selling or even just giving away a drone, here's the new mandatory pre-flight checklist. First, you need to open your DJI Fly app. Then you're gonna to go to the unbind your drone from your account section. 
then you're gonna let the new owner bind it to their account and their controller. And if you skip that, your buyer is gonna get stuck with altitude limits, no firmware updates, and zero DJI care or warranty support. And to be clear here, we're not just talking about the latest Mini or the Mavic. This rule is gonna cover pretty much all the Air series, all the Avadas, all the Enterprise models like the Mavic 3E or the Matrice. So if you're buying used, ask the seller to unbuy the drone right in front of you. No excuses, no, oh, I'll do it later. Three-year-old disappeared on Father's Day, which is Sunday, June 15th, in Cote de Lac in Quebec. A massive 72-hour search ensued and hundreds of police officers and civilian volunteers combed the area and then they brought in the drone. So a tip spurred a drone team into action and by Wednesday, June 18th, yesterday at around 3 p.m., was found safe. Own mother, Rachel Todd, reported her missing at about 3.30 p.m. on June 15th and has since been arrested on child abandonment charges and is now awaiting trial. Police are also seeking a woman who met with Todd on the day she disappeared. She could be a crucial witness. So why does this matter? This is a case where drones weren't just gadgets, they weren't just toys, they weren't just flying around having fun, they saved a life. It shows how flying smart, responsibly, and collaboratively with first responders pays off. So if you're a casual flyer or a member of a local drone club, here's some things to keep in mind if you wanna get involved. First off, register with the SAR team and make sure that they know what you've got for equipment so that they can call on you. Plan for those emergencies and know the local protocols and get involved with training. And then for training, yeah, train for the unexpected, practice search grids, low altitude scans, and maintaining situational awareness so you're ready when the time comes. Sony just unveiled the AS-DT1, the world's smallest and lightest LiDAR depth sensor. It's a tiny little cube, just 29 millimeters across and tips the scale at a mere 50 grams. It's got the brain power of a much bigger sensor and somehow fits in the body of a GoPro accessory. Hmm, maybe this might be something that's going into some drones or maybe it's already in some drones. But this isn't toy tech. The AS-DT1 uses direct time of flight, that's DTOF, making it tough enough for drones, ground robots, autonomous vehicles, or even factory bots. It even detects low reflective and floating objects, perfect for inspection drones, environmental monitoring, or scanning dark materials without missing a beat. And Sony says it's launching in spring 2026, but prototypes are already making the rounds and will be at Exponential 2025 and Automatica. So yeah, it's apparently not vaporware, it's airborne and it's on the way. LiDAR. All right, farmers and ag pilots, if you were hoping to swap your boom sprayer for a drone this season, Health Canada's got some news for you and it's not exactly uplifting. So despite growing demand, drone-based pesticide spraying on field crops remains illegal in Canada. Why? Because the Pest Control Products Act says a pesticide that can only be used in the way that's written on the label. And unless the label says remotely piloted aircraft system or RPAS for, again, acronym nerds. So some examples are granular microbials used for mosquito and black fly control. There's one herbicide, uh, Garland XRT for vegetation management along roads and right away. The Pest Management Regulatory Agency or PMRI says that each pesticide needs a full risk and value assessment before drones can be used as an approved deployment method. And guess what? That process can take 16 months or more for every single product. So unless your pesticide label gets an RPAS update, drone spring is considered off-label use, which could land you with up to a $10,000 fine. And Transport Canada recently raised weight limits for special flight ops certificates. They won't be needed anymore, up to 150 kilograms loaded to accommodate the heavy lift spray drones as of November 4th of this year. So if you're in agriculture, here's what you can do. You can talk to your pesticide suppliers ask them when they'll be submitting drone use label updates and engage with your provincial agriculture ministry. Some are building drone specific training programs, but they need momentum. Keep records and data because the PMRA says real world drone spray data also helps with accelerating those approvals. So that's it for this week, but the party's not over. We've got a bunch of new content that we're working on, so make sure that you stay tuned. And if you missed last week's video, we debunked drone myths like, no, your neighbor isn't spying on you or your barbecue. Like, subscribe, and share this with a friend who thinks that drones are just flying GoPros. And we'll catch you next time.